Great. So a little bit about Regis. Uh, we were founded in 1927 by the Sisters of St. Joseph. Um, we were founded originally as an all-women's institution um, and really founded with, with great uh, moral foundation, um, something that we'll get into a little bit. Um, but we were founded as an all-women's institution in 1927, and we were all women until 2007 when we went co-ed. So um, about a decade and a half since we've been co-ed, co um, and still very much grounded in the Sisters of St. Joseph's um, foundation. And one of the big ways that we show that is our commitment to community service. So um, community service is very big at Regis. You can see from this group here, they were actually in um, South Dakota doing a service trip um, where they're standing is in a bunkhouse that they were building on a Native American reservation. We send students all over. So our students have traveled to Kenya, Peru, Nicaragua, Los Angeles, New Orleans, South Dakota, um, and really all over the country and all over the world. So an opportunity during spring break, Christmas break, summer break to go on one of these traveling service trips. Um, but we also do have service close to home. So students are able to serve at the local soup kitchen or animal shelter, or we have students that volunteer at nursing homes or students that volunteer giving um, extra help after school for students. So um, lots of different opportunities to volunteer locally as well. We do have four schools at Regis. Um, the first is our School of Health Sciences. Some of our most popular programs in um, the school include dental hygiene, our two medical imaging programs, so diagnostic medical sonography and nuclear medicine. Um, also, psychology is um, pretty popular, uh, especially if you might be interested in education. You might want to couple that with psychology. Um, and we do have some um, unique offerings that I'll talk about a little bit later with um, some three-year programs in the School of Health and Health Sciences as well. Um, additionally, if you're interested in more the physical therapy or occup occupational therapy route, um, we do have this therapeutic recreation and exercise science that kind of go very nicely into our pre-healthcare advising into those two programs, physical therapy or occupational therapy. Our second school is our School of Business and Communication. Um, this is really a, a hugely growing school. Um, our Global Business Manager program has, um, is longstanding, um, but some of our newer programs include business analytics, financial planning, two programs um, that have come from um, you know, lots of research and lots of um, looking into what the um, what the world is looking for. So um, looking more at financial planning, we have the opportunity to do this as a major or as a certificate program. And um, you can actually sit for the um, certified financial planning test after you graduate. Um, and then within global business management, you kind of get a wide range of all the different types of businesses and you can pick a focus. So you can pick a focus like economics or communication or accounting. So you definitely have um, lots of flexibility in the global business management program as well. Then of course our school of nursing, our young school of nursing is um, one of our most popular um, and our most popular major nursing. Um, we are one of the country's top nursing schools and top 10 in New England overall which we're very proud of. Um, and we were this first university in New England to be designated a Center for Excellence in Nursing Education. And those are things that we're really proud of. We have beautiful sim labs on our campus. Um, we send our students to some of the best hospitals in Boston and in the greater Boston area. We use places like Boston Children's and Mass General and Brigham and Women, some of these major hospitals. The great thing about the nursing program is it's also opened doors for our other majors um, as well. So because we have these longstanding um, relationships with these hospitals, we've had students go and intern in other areas. Um, we've had students from the business department go 
and in turn with Dana-Farber Cancer, Cancer Institute on their fundraising side or their accounting side. Um, we've had students who have had internships with neuroscience and psychology in some of these hospitals, and those doors have really been opened up by our strong um, nursing program. And then last but not least is our School of Arts and Sciences. Um, for those familiar with the Sisters of St. Joseph, they were and still are educators in the greater Boston area. So education is definitely a big program for us. Um, and we have all levels of education um, from all the way from early childhood to secondary education as well. Um, biology is also very popular with our pre-professional programs like pre-dental, pre-med, pre-vet. Um, we also have a humanities department. And for those of you who might be un, um, not sure, we have an undecided department where you can come in, take some classes across all of our different schools and um, decide by the end of your sophomore year um, what major you wanna go into. Of course, that does have some restrictions. So our nursing program and our dental hygiene program, um, you have to come in as a first year. Um, same thing for our medical imaging programs, our diagnostic medical sonography and nuclear medicine. But any of our other programs, you can come in undecided, take a few classes and, and make your decision there as well. Um, and as far as academic resources are concerned, we do offer free academic resources for all of our students. So um, every student at Regis is uh, assigned an academic coach and you can really use them as much or as little as you want, but they are located in the library. So um, you are able to go upstairs, the second floor of the Learning Commons and um, have that academic coaching as well. Um, we do have this peer tutoring. If you feel like you will learn better from a fellow student as opposed to a staff member, there's an opportunity to sit with some students who have taken those same classes as you, have been recommended by a professor, and now are tutoring. We also have a writing center and a quantitative center for any specific tutoring. And then um, last but not least, we have our 24 hour online paper review. Um, for any of you who end up in the library, you know, late at night, of course, um, everybody on this call, very well prepared. So we're not thinking anybody's going to be in the library late, but it happens. So if anybody is in the library, you know, 11 midnight, trying to get their paper done and need that extra help after the offices have closed, this 24 hour online paper review is an option as well. Um, and that is available to all of our students. All of these services are available to our students free. So there's no extra charge every time you go tutoring. There's no extra charge for this online paper review. It's all um, part of your experience at Regis. So all of these academic resources. One thing we like to say at Regis is it's really hard to fail because there's a lot of academic resources there for you. If you take advantage and you go for the academic coaching, the tutoring, you meet with your advisor, there's somebody there who's going to support you um, and you're not going to be alone. So that is something that we're really proud of all of our academic resources. We do have some fast track programs that I mentioned earlier. So a couple of our programs are four plus one. Um, so an opportunity to start taking master's classes in your junior and senior year. And then by the time you graduate, you have three graduate courses. Um, that count both your undergraduate and your graduate degree. They waive the GPA, um, the GRE, if you have a 3.0 uh, GPA or higher in those classes. And then um, it doesn't affect your undergraduate tuition, even if you're taking a graduate level class as an undergrad. Um, and that's really an opportunity you graduate, say in education, and you have six or seven classes left to take, or communication, you have six or seven classes left to take, and then in that one extra year, you get your master's um, really in that fast track pace, which is really nice. We also have um, five three-year bachelor's degrees, and those degrees um, are across all of our schools, um, except for nursing, but we do have a three-year degree in psychology and social work in the School of Health Sciences. We have a three-year degree in global business management in the School of Business and Communication. And then we have three-year degrees in um, 
biology and also in the humanities in our School of Arts and Sciences. So some opportunities to get your bachelor's degree a year early, and then you can either start working or you can go into these plus one master's programs and graduate three plus one with a bachelor's and master's. So still doing your traditional four years, but um, graduating with two degrees at the end of the four years instead of one. Um, these programs save up to 54,000 um, across your three years. And then um, you do have to do some online summer coursework, but the nice part about that is that you do not have to be on campus for that. So um, you save some money when it comes to room and board, um, and you have an opportunity to take some classes over the summer um, with your group that is doing the three-year program. And a little bit about our student life. So um, we have over 30 student clubs and organizations on campus. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we have a huge involvement in service, um, but we also want our students to get involved. So um, we have lots of different opportunities. One of my favorite days of the whole year is actually this middle picture here. Um, and in the middle picture, you can see our activities fair. And um, that's where students can go outside. We have one in the fall one in the spring. Sometimes the spring has to come inside in January, never know the weather. Um, but in the, the fall one, everybody's outside on the quad, all the clubs and organizations set up their booths. So an opportunity to kind of learn when their meetings are, what their club is about, and how you can join. Um, and they have that every semester. So if you want to come in your first semester and you know focus more on your academics, you can certainly do that knowing that next semester they'll have this club's fair and something that you might be able to join later on. Um, it's usually a fun day, lots of free giveaways, um, lots of music, different things like that. Fun to be outside and learn about the different clubs. And also who doesn't like a free giveaway? Who doesn't like a free college t-shirt from wherever they're, they're going? So lots of opportunities for some of that um, fun stuff as well. And then when it comes to our athletics, um, Regis competes in the um, Great Northeast Athletic Conference. We have um, 20 NCAA Division III teams. Um, and I would say there's a huge support for our sports teams on campus. Um, if you are not an athlete yourself, I can almost guarantee you'll know an athlete because um, our athletes do make up a good percentage of our um, student body. And um, there's opportunities for varsity sports or intramural sports. Um, so if you don't want to play a varsity sport, you can also try an intramural. Um, but our Regis teams are highly successful. Um, we just wrapped up our winter seasons where our um, women's basketball team had a great run. Our men's basketball team had a strong season. And... Um, you know, our fall seasons also were, were very strong, um, very competitive. Last year, we had some championships on the track and field side. So um, very successful sports teams and, and just fun to go to the games. You can see in the middle picture, the women's basketball, the crowd behind them. There is always a, you know, great atmosphere at these games and a great opportunity to kind of do something different with your friends um, or your family and bring them to a game. And, and that is always fun. And then a little bit more about our study abroad. So I did mention those international service trips um, and those are certainly a great way to get traveling and get abroad, but um, a little bit shorter. So if you're thinking you wanna go for a full semester, um, we will uh, let you go abroad for a full semester. Of course, it depends on the safety of the country um, and whether or not your credits will transfer back from the college, but that's something we all set up with you beforehand. So. Our Center for Global Connections is great at setting up those um, relationships with different um, schools and the ability to kind of map out what your plan is going to be for classes and how those will transfer back when you are done. Um, and that is also offered. Um, we do have some small classes or specific classes that do small study abroad programs. So we have a couple of classes, like we had an English class that would that went to London a few years ago. We've had public health classes go to South America. So um, 
different opportunities if you are not sure you want to go for a full semester but you want to get your feet wet um, there's opportunities to um, take those classes and do you know a seven to ten day trip um, to one of those countries to kind of get an idea hey would I like this for three months or four months or is ten days enough for me um, and that's a good way to find out Um, one thing we're really proud of at Regis is 100% of our students complete an internship, student teaching, or a clinical experience. Um, and that is something that, um, of course, you're only required one, but a lot of our students are doing more than one opportunity. And um, that really is something that we're proud of for students to be able to get out there, get that real world experience. So when they graduate, um, they do have that experience. We are just 12 miles from Boston. Um, we do offer a shuttle that goes to the train or the mall or a couple other local stops, but um, the train, if you need to get in and out, which is great for internships, jobs, just for fun. Um, and of course, if you're from Boston, you know uh, 12 miles, pretty short, 20 minutes or a quick two hours, um, depending on the traffic, but uh, we are, you know, very close to the city. The train is obviously the easiest option to get in there, um, and our students go in all the time um, when it comes to internships, as I mentioned before, um, some of the clinical rotations in the major Boston hospitals, and we also have some school-sponsored trips to Fenway Park for a game or to Faneuil Hall to go shopping or um, you know, to any of the major sports teams as well, or there might be a play or something like that. And our Center for Student Engagement is pretty good at putting on those um, trips into those areas. And I like to say with the last two slides combined, the 100% of internships and our location so close to Boston, 97% um, of our students are either professionally employed or enrolled in graduate school within six months of graduation. And one thing that we're really proud to point out um, is a professional employment. So um, we are counting students who are getting jobs in their, their field based on their degree. Um, of course, it's great if you go back to your part-time job at Target, that is not why you came to college and not why you came to Regis. We want you to know that your degree is worth the time and the money and showing that um, 97 percent of our students are either in that professional employment or enrolled in grad school um, is something we're really proud of because it shows that um, your degree will at Regis will lead to um, a job in professional employment um, and it is going to be worth your time and of course your investment into that so something that we're definitely proud of Um, so as far as our financial aid, 100% uh, of our incoming first year students uh, for fall 2019 did receive some sort of merit scholarship. So um, the generosity of our merit is something we're really proud of as well. We want to make college accessible for all. Um, you are automatically considered for merit scholarship um, based on your GPA. Um, so that is something that you do not have to apply extra for. And then the only thing we require for need-based financial aid and other grants at Regis is the free application for federal student aid, or also known as the FAFSA. So something, um, if you haven't filled out yet, definitely um, get on that because um, that is something that is constantly being reviewed by our financial aid office, and we would want to get your financial aid package as quickly as possible. When it comes to applying in a I think most people that are on the call are actually admitted students, but I'll go over this quickly just in case anybody I missed. Um, we are on the common application, um, so common application only, that's what we require. Um, we do look for your official high school transcript. Um, sometimes we will look for your um, first quarter or, or midterm grades, um, depending on when you apply. Uh, we do only require one letter of recommendation. Um, you can certainly send more than one letter, um, and that is um, can come from a guidance counselor, a teacher. Um, usually we look for one academic minimum, and then some students will send a coach or an employer um, or anything like that. Um, and then we are test optional. 
uh, although we do require test scores for nursing and dental hygiene. So those programs are not test optional, but any of our other programs are. Um, so something to keep in mind. And then when it comes to transfer students, um, very similar uh, setup. We are on the common application. We will look for your final high school transcript or um, GED scores. Um, we will look for your official college transcript from all of the colleges you have attended. And then one letter of recommendation from a professor, advisor, or employer. And similarly, we are test optional, um, except for those programs that we mentioned, the dental hygiene and the nursing. So those are the two programs that we will require um, tests across the board, um, except for when it comes to transfers, if you are more than three years outside of high school, we'll look more at your GPA um, and less at the test score. So something to be aware of. So that being said, um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I will also follow up. I know traditionally you would go on tour now, and that would be um, something that we would uh, like to still offer you. So um, the students that are signed up for the info session and here today, what we will do is we will follow up with you with our virtual tour. So if you haven't had an opportunity to take that yet, please feel free to take it, um, take a look around our campus. And um, you know, if you have any questions from then, from then, once you see some of the different areas on our campus, please feel free to reach out to myself or any of our other admission counselors. Um, and we can certainly answer those questions for you. Um, but that being said, I am going to stop sharing my screen so I can see if anybody has any questions. Um, and you can feel free to send them to me or unmute and let me know. Great. Doesn't look like anybody has any questions. Um, I can certainly hang out here for a few more minutes. Um, and if anybody does, you can feel free to stay. Um, but I would like to thank everybody for popping on and um, seeing uh, the info session. Um, if you do have any questions um, outside of this, you can shoot me an email. Um, I think my email address might be shown on my screen, but if not, um, you can find us on our website. Great, great, great question, Grace, um, about the survey that comes out for finding a roommate. So um, that typically comes out around orientation. And um, what happens uh, with that, and this is a survey you can fill out to select a roommate. And what happens with that is um, over, over orientation, you'll get a presentation from Residence Life. They'll kind of walk you through the steps of how to request a roommate. And if you don't have somebody in mind, you can fill out that survey. And that will be um, something that will uh, come out right around orientation, which will be in, in the end of June. So um, something to be aware of. Um, if you have already deposited, you should have a login for um, your Regis email address. So once you deposit, you should get that. You should get more information about your placement tests, and then eventually you'll also get that information about the roommate survey as well. Um, great question. So, um, like I was saying, I just want to thank everybody for coming. If you um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, and we will go on from there. Okay. Now, Grace um, has asked for everybody has asked. Um, when do we have to take do the placement test? So the placement test has already come out, and um, with the placement test, uh, it should you should be able to log into your Regis account um, via the um, account username and password that came to you uh, from our IT department. If you don't have that, we can certainly um, chat offline and try and get you a, um, that sent to you again. Um, so the placement test has to be done prior to um, orientation, but we do have course registration uh, dates in April, May, and June. So if you would like to register uh, for classes in April or May, you'd have to do that as soon as possible. Um, and once you complete the placement test, somebody from advising will reach out to you and set up the appointment for um, you're registering for classes. So 
Um, that means that if you want to apply, if you want to register in April, um, I believe it's the third week of April, um, they are still hosting those appointments. So um, you will want to um, fill out that placement test now. And great question, Megan. Megan asks, um, how will course registration work with COVID-19? So um, similar to this, all of our course registrations can either be done um, via Zoom or via the phone. So um, that will still be done virtually. Um, and that, that is an opportunity um, you would meet with one of our academic advisors, um, via, either virtually like this or over the phone, and they would walk you through what your academic advisor should be doing at Regis and what their course of action will be, and then also um, walk you through registering for classes. So it will work the same way as this. Great question. Is it great? All right. Is there any other questions? So Grace asks, um, do you think that this will delay the start of our school year? Um, great question, Grace. Uh, and certainly um, we do not, we're continuing to monitor the situation. Um, we're hoping to, it won't. Um, we're hoping like everyone else that we'll be able to start operations like high schools and colleges. Um, but we will continue to update you um, as it goes along. And um, as of right now, I think it's hard to know what, what direction this will go, but um, we will continue to update you and notify you of any changes. Um, but as of right now, there has been no change to the start of the year. Great. All right. It looks like there's no other questions coming in. Um, there's still time, so if you want, I can certainly stay, but um, I appreciate it. Yep, of course. Um, Megan asks uh, a little bit more about the nursing internship. So um, when it comes to our nursing clinicals, um, they are, they start um, typically in the the spring of the sophomore year, um, but we do have uh, like our simulation labs on campus. So our students, um, they practice on the, the dummies before um, the, the, the dummies and the, before they go out into the hospitals. Um, and then um, typically you're gonna do um, one uh, clinical rotation for every semester moving forward from that. Um, some of our students will also work in the summers to get extra experience as CNAs or different things like that. Um, and then that kind of all culminates into your final um, preceptorship at the end where you are actually one-on-one -on -one with a, a nurse. So um, what you would do is you would first go into your clinical rotations as small groups of six students um, and you go into the hospital with those students and you have a clinical instructor at the hospital and then um, and your, the end of your time in your senior year, that's when you do that one-on-one -on -one with the nurse and you kind of follow them around whatever their schedule is. Um, so um, as far as, so the, the follow-up is uh, that there were separate experiences through internships that was separate from the clinical. So no, the 100% of internship experience, um, your clinical is counted as your internship, so it's not separate. It's just uh, the clinical um, rotation is counted as your internship requirement. So um, for our nursing students um, or our medical imaging students, they don't do a separate internship. They just do just a clinical. Yeah, of course, no problem. Um, so when it comes to, uh, Grace asked about, uh, will we schedule the accepted students day? Um, we are um, excited to be working on um, a virtual option for accepted student day. Um, that will, um, that is something that we are um, continuing to work on um, and gonna be updating students on soon. Um, but 
as of now, the in-person event on April 5th is canceled, um, but we will supplement that with um, a series of virtual events. Um, the first one to be aware of is there is a nursing event on March um, 30th. So that will be a um, virtual uh, class with um, one of our nursing professors and um, that will be March 30th in the afternoon. So um, please be on the lookout for that invite as well. If you are on the class Facebook group, um, the class of 2024, um, there is a um, link to that nursing event already. That's a great question, Grace. If I were a student, would you want to go to Regis? So I actually got my um, master's from Regis, so I was a student at Regis at one point, um, and I would say um, it was an interesting experience transitioning from a staff member to actually sitting in classes. And we have a couple of um, people on the call who are actually alums of the bachelors. And um, I would say I love my experience as a student. Um, it's very community feel, community oriented. Um, as you can see on here, there is a lot of other folks and um, it's our, you know, the rest of our admission staff and they are, supporting me in, in this presentation. And that's just the type of vibe that you get from the students all the way through the staff. It's just a support, family feel. Um, that is something that I have really appreciated. I've been at Regis for just about four years. Um, and something I've really appreciated is they, I've been adopted into uh, their family there at Regis. And um, so yes, I think it's, um, if I were a student, um, it's definitely a place that um, I, I would look at and, and potentially go to. And, and I love my experience as a student as um, in, my, in my master's program as well. Um, how do you, so you would sign up for the nursing, um, Grace asked how you would sign up for the nursing event virtually. Um, so you would sign up for that the same way um, that you signed up for this. It will all be on our events calendar. So if you go into our website and um, go to the Visit Regis tab, um, you will be able to find the nursing event. Or if you're on the class Facebook group, like I mentioned, um, there's an op it's already been posted on the class Facebook group. There'll also be an email that goes out with that information about all of our um, accepted um, you know, student virtual events, and then I can certainly send you the link separately as well um, if you have trouble finding any of that, all right? These are great. All right. Great, thank you. Thank you, Grace and Megan and um, it, everybody that's with Megan. Um, it, thank you for coming today, I really appreciate it. Um, it was great to have you all here virtually. It was um, you know, a great opportunity. If you do have any individual questions, you can reach out. Um, you can email us. Um, all of our counselors also have uh, work cell phones that you can reach out via text or um, phone call. Um, and certainly, um, please be in touch with us. We will be in touch with you with any of our other virtual events. Um, and hopefully, we will um, see you in the near future at some of those events as well. So have a great Friday, a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. It's supposed to be nice out today, depending on where you are. And um, Hopefully uh, we will see you again soon at one of these virtual events. Thanks.